Welcome back to my garden. Here we are on a lovely sunny day in July and I'm going to show you about weeding. Weeding's not a huge problem in the domestic garden but you can make it a lot easier for yourself just by knowing a few techniques. So I'm going to show you mulching, uh, how to control weeds by laying down a mulch on the surface of the soil, polyculture, how to reduce weed problems by growing different plants together, then I'll be getting out my hoe, showing you how I use the hoe, and finally a bit of casual weeding. I love that expression, casual weeding. Everything in the garden really should be casual. If you saw last month's episode, film number three, you will have seen me planting this lot, a mixture of cabbage and sweet corn. This is my later sweet corn. We'll be seeing my early sweet corn a little bit later on. And what we have here is an example of mulching. So mulching suppresses weeds by denying them light. Uh, before I planted this lot, there was a certain amount of perennial weeds here and I just scraped over quickly with the trowel, didn't make a particularly thorough job of killing them. And then I mulched firstly with a layer of compost and then with a layer of this straw-like stuff which actually is, in fact is common reeds. And so the way that mulch suppresses weeds is by denying them light because can't, plants can't live without light. And uh, that's fine, but in this case it didn't work 100%. And what we have coming through here is some seeds from the compost. Because I only make cold compost, I don't make hot compost which actually kills weed seeds. Um, I'll talk about composting another time, I don't want to get into too much detail. But what we have here are, uh, th these aren't actually weed seeds, they're vegetable seeds. <laughs> I, I allow my uh, leaf beet and Swiss chard and so forth to set seed and seed itself around the garden. And so of course when I take that plant and put it in the compost heap, there's still lots of seeds in it. So that compost ended up with seeds in it. Now, I could have prevented this by simply putting a layer of newspaper above the layer of compost, below the layer of reeds. So that would have denied light to the seeds in the compost and they would have failed to grow. I didn't, but now here comes the second piece of magic in, in uh, uh, sheep mulching, is that the crop plants actually begin to take over. So these cabbages here, you see, will grow and before these little beet plants can do anything like starting to compete with the crops, the cabbage will have taken over the function of the mulch. It will be shading out the weeds. Okay, there will be one or two, but I don't actually regard these as weeds. You know, if next spring I find that I have a fantastic crop of beet here, I'll just leave it and that will be my crop. You know, I'm, I'm a somewhat flexible gardener. Another tip in hot weather, wear a hat. Helps you go on working much longer. Bit of shade around the head. So, here we've got a similar thing to what we were just looking at. This is my early crop of sweet corn and underneath it there is a crop of squash, it's a mixed crop. Now one of the many advantages of having this mixed crop is weed control. Although we've got the mulch underneath, um, another aspect of this is the fact that sweet corn is a very weedy crop. You know, it's tall, narrow, plenty of space between the plants for weeds to grow. Squash is the exact opposite, it's a weed suppressor. So when that mulch breaks down and weeds start coming up through, or if that mulch breaks down and weeds start coming up through, we've got squash as a weed suppressor. A bushy plant with horizontal leaves, each one of which joins together, they join together to make a complete canopy that shades out weeds. Not so important actually on a small garden scale, but once you start getting on a big garden, something like that that you can put in, a crop like that that you can put in, smother the weeds, is really useful. And if you can combine it, as in this case, with the very thing that's vulnerable to weeds, you do away with the weeding problem, in, in that bed at least, for those two crops. Okay, here we are in the front garden, and this time I have a hoe in my hand. I'm going to do a bit of hoeing. Um, the hoe is a brilliant tool. Most things, you don't need to dig them up. All you need to do is separate 
the plant from the above ground part of the plant from its roots and it dies. Okay, some things don't die, dandelions, they'll grow again, but I like to leave the dandelions in the ground and what they're doing is they're pumping up nutrients from the subsoil and making them available to the topsoil. The main thing with weeds is never let them set seed. It's an old saying, one year's seeds is seven years weeds, because plants always produce vastly more seed than they need. And if you let them set seed, you're going to have problems. Now, I do let some things set seed. Those are things I want. I'll show you some of those in a moment. But just now, I'd like to focus on the path. Now, I must say, I wouldn't have let this path get so weedy if I hadn't known you were coming and we were going to be doing filming about weeds. I don't normally let it get to this state. I try to hoe things when they're small, because it's easier then, and there's less chance that they will set seed. knowing quite what to do with a path in order for it not to be a source of weeds which then go ahead and uh, invade your beds. Over the years I've tried lots of different mulches and different things and I've come to the conclusion in the end that the best thing is just to hoe them. Uh, it doesn't need doing very often. I can get round my whole garden in about 10 minutes and I have to do it for once every three weeks and through the growing season at the most. So it, it's not a lot of work hoeing as long as you keep on top of it. It's more seeds means more weeds. So that's a little bit about the paths. Let's have a look at the beds. This bed you see I've put down a mulch of uh, compost and I'm going to hoe it. There's not much in there though. I don't get much in the way of weeds in my beds dandelion there, might as well have that out, although I do eat dandelions but there's always plenty of dandelions, don't need to worry about that. <laughs> um, anything that's growing really close to a leek I'll have out, but there are also some plants here that I want to leave. That one, that one, those are both um, landcress, which is a lovely salad vegetable and I leave them, they self-seeded from my crops and I will eat them at some point. My definition of a weed is something that's growing in too great a quantity. You know, if I can use it either for eating or for some other purposes in the quantity that it's growing, then I harvest it. If it grows more than that, then I weed it. <laughs> Weeding just means it goes to the compost heap instead of the table. But ornamentals come into it as well. Here's a self-seeded foxglove. And I've let foxgloves self-seed in the garden for ages. But what I'm noticing is as the generations go by, they're getting pretty measly. I mean, this one here, it's not gonna, it, it hasn't made much of a display. And I think from now on, I'm just gonna hoe them out. And the one beside it is leaf beet. And that's one that I let self-seed quite a bit. And not entirely. And one thing about allowing things to self-seed is they don't necessarily come up when you want them. So hand sewing can also be worthwhile. Yeah. The beetroot is a bit less weedy than the leeks because it's a more of a shading plant. I mean, there might be the odd one or two here, but you can see here where I've harvested one, a pretty blank area. So uh, different crops have different ability to suppress weeds. Beetroot's not brilliant, but leeks are pretty hopeless. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is casual weeding. And for that, we go back to the back garden. So casual weeding is nothing more than picking out the odd weed as you go past. Here I had broad beans here until recently, harvesting the beans has revealed the odd weed. So I just happened to be passing by. I whip them out and you know, it takes seconds. Usually casual weeding is even less to pick out than that. One of the things I've got here is bindweed. And this quite honestly is all I do about bindweed. You know, it can be a terrible problem in a garden, but if every time you see a piece of bindweed, you can just nip it off at the surface, gradually the bindweed will decrease. I don't think it'll ever go away, but you will get less and less through time. And so with a combination of these four methods that I've showed you, I don't really get a problem with weeds. 